Hello. I'm just noticing I've got a cable here that shouldn't be here. Let me move that out of the way. How is everyone tonight? How exciting. Ooh. So um, I see a couple of people have been chatting, mostly Margaret. Hey. Oh, Tegan's sleeping. Lucky her. <laughs> Actually, I had a couple of days of um, not being very well earlier in the week and um, and I have been napping a lot the last couple of days. So but better, better now. Hey, Jenny, nice to see you. Okay. All right. So I'm going to start out tonight. I'm not sure how many people are here yet. Uh, we've got seven people watching so far. Hello, Sol Vega. Nice to see you. Hey, Jody. Hello, hello. Okay. Hey, Denise, welcome back from Queensland. Nice to see you here. And thank you very much for leaving those cards and envelopes out on the doorstep. You know what? In the end, I've still got them unopened. Um, those cards and envelopes, by the way, have sold out. Hey, Kim, nice to see you. Nice to see you. It's been a while. All right. Okay. Um, so I'm going to start out saying what I've said the last couple of times because I think it's a really important thing that we are being a negativity-free zone tonight. No sad stories, no bad stuff. We're only talking positive, happy things because we want this to be an escape and a, a time away from all of that other stuff that no one wants to think about. So let's keep it positive and, um, and see how we go tonight. Has anyone got any fantastic awesome news to tell me tonight i'd be very happy to hear it hey jenny nice to see you <laughs> that's good hey katrina hi nari hi linda hey judy yep no negativity we don't need that right i know there's a few people here who've been going through some really tough stuff lately and if you're one of those people you know i'm talking to you but i let's tonight just put all that aside and just craft and and use this as a little escape, okay? So if anyone starts coming out with sad stuff and negative stuff, we're allowed to say, no, 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 we're not going to do that, okay? Oh, good, you got the tutorial, Elizabeth. That's great. Great to hear. Hey, Cherie, nice to see you. Hello, hello. All right, okay. Um, I, got, I had the huge, huge pleasure of doing something really exciting this week. I'm on a thing for Stampin' Up! called The Sales and... What's it called? The Sales and Promotions Council. And this week, um, there's 12 demonstrators who um, we actually had to go through an interview process to do it. It's sort of something you can apply for when they decide to set these um, council things up. And I was really lucky to be one of the ones that was chosen. And one of the things that we're doing, we're not, we don't decide the promotions that Stampin' Up! brings out, but what we do is we help to we help demonstrators to know how best to approach them how to sell them that kind of thing so um one of the things i got to do this week this is world watercolor month and so um july is world watercolor month so what they have done for that was they put together a watercolor class for demonstrators and i got to do that okay so um, it was in a thing, we have a, a big Facebook group of over 40,000 demonstrators. I know that's insane how many demonstrators are on there. Um, and we got myself and four other girls got to present some watercolour techniques and it was heaps and heaps of fun. So, hey, hey girls, <laughs> nice to see you all. Um, so, uh, did anyone happen to catch it? Are there any demonstrators here who happened to see the presentation the other day? It was on Thursday morning at 8 o'clock Sydney time, Eastern Eastern Standard Time. Um, and I had heaps of fun doing it. It was really, really cool. Um, I'd love to hear if anyone saw it. It's International Lipstick Day. Oh, my goodness, Judy, that's a good one. Oh, speaking of days, I need to talk to you about that as well. <laughs> yes, it was on the demonstrator planning place, the DPP. Um, and it was Wednesday morning. You had to actually register for it to watch it live. Um, and it was like a webinar style. But they are going to make it available to all demonstrators. There was no charge to watch it. And five of us showed five different techniques, kind of a little bit more than five. But, yeah, five different ways of using watercolours in your crafting. And I thought it went really, really well. Everyone had really great ideas. Um, I got to show, you know, the, the ones that I loved. I did, I did this one that one there and oh what's another one I did I did I did a couple that are you know that kind of scene building style that I like to do um let me see what else do I do oh I did this one so 
that one. Actually, I messed that one up when I did it. Some of you may have seen on the end, I got a big whoopsie here. I accidentally turned it over and got a big blob and I was able to use my blending brushes and get rid of it. So that's how the card ended up turning out. So for anyone who was wondering if I saved it, I think I did okay. All right, so that's that's what that was. Innisfail, that's a long way, Maria. Welcome. I'm glad to have you with us tonight. Okay, speaking of days, okay, you were just talking about International Lipstick Day. Um, I announced the other day we have a set in our um, – in our catalog called brightest beauty i think it is is that what it's called i think that's what it's called um yes brightest beauty and it's a i'm going to use it tonight because i as i announced everyone the first of august bear with me here the first of august is wattle day okay and then when i posted that the other day some people said but well, hang on a second isn't that the first of september and I thought to myself, no, it's not the 1st of September. It's always been the 1st of August. Well, it was when I was a kid. It was the 1st of August. That's what I learned at school. Guess what? It's not the 1st of August anymore. Now it's the 1st of September. <laughs> Shiraz Day. Is that today or on the 1st, Cheryl? <laughs> oh, I know. These are not clouds. These are just, this is just a sky. Yeah. So there we go. Um, I'm just looking at the comments. Oh, you enjoyed the presentation. Thank you, Wendy. That's really nice. I I thought all all the girls did such a good job. I mean, some of them were really nervous. I'm really lucky because I go live with you guys a couple of times a week and it was exactly like that. So I wasn't nervous at all. <laughs> um, but some of the other girls, I think, were really, really nervous because they're not used to maybe doing as many lives, that sort of stuff. But, um, yeah. It was, it was a lot of fun. If you can, if you're a demonstrator, um, then there will be a replay posted of the demonstrations um, and they are fantastic. You could use them in classes. You could use them for yourself. You could use them however you would like and they're well worth watching. So um, if you have the opportunity to go on to the demonstrator planning place and watch those, I would thoroughly recommend it. Really, really great, really, really great resource for those of you who are demonstrators. <sighs> okay, so what I found out was um, I did a bit of research. After I posted this card, so it was a card that I posted all about um, international, oh, sorry, about Wattle Day, not international Wattle Day, Wattle Day being the 1st of August, and I had a few people correct me and say, actually, isn't it the 1st of September? Turns out in 1916, here's your education for today, guys. In 1916, New South Wales changed Wattle Day from the 1st of September to the 1st of August, okay? And... Um, my understanding is from everything I looked up, it's now gone back to the 1st of September. But those of us who went to school, and I went to school, you know, um, prim my primary years were in the 70s, which means I'm dating myself, but in the 70s, and we were absolutely taught that Waddle Day was the 1st of August. So I've always thought it was. So um, the other day when I announced that it was Waddle Day on the 1st of August, I had my, um, I had, I wanted to use it this weekend to show you. I've decided to go ahead and do it anyway, but actually, Waddle Day officially is the 1st of September, okay? Yeah, I, I think it would be worth re-watching, Wendy, because I think they were fantastic, yeah. I know, right, Cherie? So you thought it was the 1st of August too? Well, a whole bunch of us who went to school in the 60s and 70s um, thought it was the 1st of August, but it's not. It's the 1st of September. So who knew, right? <laughs> so... Um, yeah, that's what I thought. I'm thinking, yeah, it's the same day as horse's birthday, 1st of August, which is definitely, yeah, definitely the 1st of August, right? Oh, hi, Kathy. Welcome. Whereabouts in Minnesota are you? Are you um, Minneapolis or are you close by there somewhere? My, um, my very, very good friend, Susan Campfield, some of you know that she's a very dear friend of mine. She and I, I'm going over to New Orleans, and that's something else I have to talk to you about, going over to New Orleans at the end of next month. Um, for a conference and um, Susan from she's from St Paul in Minneapolis and she and I are going to be staying together um, down in New Orleans in the hotel that Stampin' Up! has booked for us so very very exciting hey Donna hello 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 everyone all right yeah first of August is the horse's birthday that's definitely true but the, there's a little bit of confusion over whether it's Waddle Day or not some of us think it is and some of us think it's the first of September but I'm going to take both, right? So let's switch over to the desk and I will show you what's on here. And there's actually a reason that I'm doing this, okay? So go with me. Um, 
This is the set that I'm talking about. It's on page 60 of the current mini catalogue, which is this one. This is the mini catalogue that goes from July to December. So it's current right now. Um, and it's this beautiful, beautiful set with what is very obvious to me, obviously wattle. And they've got the colours right and everything here with all the yellow, all the yellow blossoms. So I think it's really lovely that we have a set that really is dedicated to um, the South Pacific in my mind. So it's lovely that we have this. And the, you know what's fantastic about this? Okay, everything you see me use tonight is available for purchase. Everything that you see, you can buy through my online store. This particular set, the stamps and the dies to match, which I'm about to use, okay, it's only $68.25 for both, okay. So the set by itself is $32. The, um, the dies by themselves are $44, but together you can get the whole bundle for $68.25, which is a really good price for a bundle, right? It's super, super cheap. So, yeah, it's a, it's a really good one for those of us who would like to send overseas card in a cards overseas featuring Australian natives. I think that's perfect. Um, the other thing that's um, kind of aimed at us, I think, as well, is there's a set at the back here called Sunkissed. This one has palm trees and a pelican and an umbrella. And so absolutely not. This is a Christmassy, because there's even a Christmas, a sunny season's greetings. Absolutely, this is aimed at the South Pacific because we're in the Southern Hemisphere and it, at Christmas it's not cold. So this is another good one that we can use in our market as well. So so there you go. North of Minneapolis. Oh, you're one of Susan Stenfield's stars. You know what? She's just awesome, Kathy. You're so lucky to have her. So, so lucky. Um, she she's my accountability buddy we get together and we talk about strategies and our goals and what we we help each other with ideas and all sorts of stuff we've even done a class together like a, a live a, a, like an, a class that we pre-recorded and she did a couple of projects I did a couple of projects and then we put it out there to the world and it did quite well um, and she's just been the most amazing person to work with and you know I have so much time for her she's just lovely and you're very lucky to be in her team how exciting all right, so this is the one I wanted to show you tonight. And then coupled with the watercolour techniques, we're going to do a watercolour -y thing. So a couple of days ago, I posted this card. Okay, did anyone see it? I posted this card. I'll bring it up closer so you can see it. Um, and I have used this stamp set. Can you see the image here? I've got some leaves sort of popping over the corners here and some bits and pieces. And I want to show you how I did this, okay? Um, and there's a reason I'm doing this. And I'm super, super excited to tell you about this. I'm going to be away for part of next month and then the beginning of the following month I'm also away. And I normally do online classes, okay? But I'm not going to do an online class in the regular way next month because I'm going to be running myself short of time and I don't want to I don't want to not be able to deliver to you guys something amazing. So I'm going to do something different, okay? And I will tell you more about it this week, um, how it's going to work. But basically, it is going to be a watercolour class um, and it is going to be an online class that everyone can attend. Um, I will tell you all the details this coming week. But basically, people who order and spend, I'm, I'm not going to say the amount because I'm still deciding the amount, but people who spend the, the dollar amount that I'm thinking of will um, then automatically receive a packet in the mail the following month to make the project live with me in September, okay? And, um, and then there'll be tutorials as well. And, yeah, so it's going to be similar but a little bit different to the usual format. And it won't be just a week or so that I'm open. It'll be the orders from the whole month will actually be, be able to qualify for this class, okay? So it's going to be fun. We'll do it live together rather than, um, like in this format, the way you and we are working right now, rather than pre-recorded stuff, I'll actually be with you. And you can ask questions as we go and all that kind of stuff, okay? So there you go. <laughs> so there you go. Which one should I have gotten, Megan? I'm just having a little look. Oh, do you mean this one? <laughs> all right okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how and this is actually for those of you who did watch the class this is actually one of the techniques that was shown in the class the other day on the demonstrated planning place and I'm going to share it with you guys now and I'm going to do this the same as I did this one in yellows okay I could pick different colors but I thought I would stick with yellows today because wattles are yellow right and I've got myself a brush that you can see of obviously it's a blending brush that's been used for oh look and there's a nice iridescent rhinestone stuck to the back why does that always happen? I've always got rhinestones stuck everywhere. 
Oh, the beach one in the back of the catalogue. Yeah, it's cool. All right, so I'm going to I'm going to put this um, into the so saffron. I'm starting with my lightest colour first. And I'm going to get as much ink as I can on it, and I'm just going to randomly start colouring over this piece. This is a piece of watercolour paper. Okay, it's um, you it will work with other types of paper. But with most watercolour techniques, I find I get the best results with watercolour paper. And I, our watercolour paper, it's called Fluid 100. There's 10 sheets. And you'll get at least two card front or card pieces out of every sheet. So, um, yeah, it's it's really lovely. It's really, really nice. And I've, I've used other watercolour paper over the years, but this one to me is particularly good. It's really good quality. So if you're wondering how it holds up, it holds up to like Canson papers, that kind of thing, for those of you who've done a little bit of art. I'm going to move up to the next darkest colour, which is Daffodil Delight. <laughs> yep, she does. All right, so I'm going to go with a bit. So this is a different yellow now. And what I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting to get a good build-up of colour on my watercolour paper. Really, really good build-up. So I'm going to go over it a couple of times because I want that ink to be sitting on the paper and I want it to be nice and thick all right so now we've got we've got so, so saffron and we've got daffodil delight the next one I'm going up to is crushed curry which is a good strong very strong yellow it's getting darker now so you should be able to see this is a darker yellow again and a couple of layers as I sponge this on We want it to be really strong and the last color I'm going to throw on here is mango melody if I had to describe this color seriously it looks like literally a, red, a ripe mango this color okay so it's yellow on its way to orange is how I would describe it so we're going to so you can see it's getting a bit more orangey now and I'm kind of Blending all these together. The blending brushes, if you don't have them, such a fantastic tool. They're fantastic. They, as far as I know, unless it's changed since I last saw it, they're $21 for a pack of three. And I usually, once I use it for yellow, I always use it for yellow. Once I use it for green, I always use it for green and so on. All right. So, all right. That's pretty good. That's not bad at all. It's lots of saturation of color on there. Let's move these out of the way. Move this one too. Everyone's gone very quiet. I hope that means that you're all um, enthralled. I hope that's what that means. All right, so I'm going to be using this beautiful wattle stamp, this one here, okay, and you can see how big it is. It's lovely here on my, this is block E, okay. You can see it better if I put something dark in front of it, okay. It's a beautiful stamp. And what I'm going to do is, Move all that out of the way. Move everything out of the way, actually. And I'm going to use my uh, spritzer. Now you can use you can use a spritzer. You can use you can use a number of things, actually. Um, here it is. Or you could use you could use water painters. Basically, what we need is water on this stamp. Okay, but the spritzer I think is the easiest way. And I'm just going to. Just a little bit of water. You know, that was what four sprays, I think. So it's sitting. The water is sitting on top of my busy watching. Good. <laughs> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and with the water on the stamp, just stamp straight into that background, that blended background. All right. Now it doesn't take very long, and it's a little bit like watching a Polaroid develop. But you're going to see these leaves start to appear. Can you see them starting to turn, starting to come? They're wet at the moment. As it dries, those colours will come out a bit more. All right. And then I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to spray it one more time. I'm just holding it away from the desk so I don't get water everywhere else. And we'll do the same thing down the other end. I know, I should colour the flower on the, the grid paper. It's beautiful, isn't it? 
maybe I'll do that one. We can do the blends or something like that and color them in. All right, now we've got this color coming through and see the leaves are becoming a little bit more distinct here now. Can you see that? And it's going to basically give us like a print, which I think is beautiful. Um, obviously, the, sat the darker your color and the more saturated your ink, the more distinct the, the picture is, the, the design. All right. I'm going to do a little bit here uh, because in this dark spot here where it's a little darker, it should show up quite well. And then the last one, I'm going to do one more. And basically, this is going to give us a... So why am I showing you this? Because I want to show next month, or it'll be in September when we actually send them out, but I want to do a water class with you guys that is going to show you how to do a whole bunch of different water watercolour techniques. So, you know, we could do some background techniques. I'm not even 100% sure of... Or, there's so many to pick from, I haven't even chosen all of them yet. There we go. It's starting to come. Now, if we want to make, we want to move this up a little faster, we can hit it with a heat tool, and that's going to make the design turn up a bit quicker. So let me grab that. Let's see if we can make it come a little faster. I'm just going to hold. It doesn't matter what you pick to hold, just anything really. Now, I was thinking a color, a, a color way that would look really, really good, and we could even do it and just have a little play, it would be like blues and greens, I think, are really nice because um, it gives you kind of a under the water, under the sea kind of a look, which I think is fun. So, But you're kind of getting an idea of how this, how this comes out. I think it's really pretty. I think it's very subtle but very beautiful. Um, and depending on the stamps you use, you, the bolder the stamp, the, the more... Um, bold the design so this this one's a little subtle but that's okay so let's pop it here I'm putting it on black because black is a great way to showcase something like this all colors just look great against the black a black backing like that and then I could decide as you can see here um, I've used can you see these little triangles this is actually a stamp from the set this one here Right, and I actually did these with Sahara Sand because that's the color that I use for my card base. And you can stamp it straight on, or you could stamp them off if you want a little more subtle. So let's do a couple here. Mm, which way would I like this to go? This is a really nice stamp, also in this lovely set. You see it how it comes out it starts to make the background really start to sing it looks good doesn't it it's just a really easy so this is this is one of the demo this is one of the um techniques that was demonstrated the other day in the one that we did for demonstrators on the dem on the dpp this demonstrated planning place no you can bleach on top of this and that's also another stunning thing i wasn't going to go to bleaching today but you absolutely could um i even have <laughs> We could do it. I'm thinking, should we? Should we not? Um, I have got a pen here that has bleach in it. Is it this one? Or well, it is that one? But I think, I don't know if it actually, well, it might work. But um, you could, if you wanted to put bleach onto some of this. Um, you could also flick it and, you know, make little spots of white. But let's just show you what it looks like if I bleach a leaf. Can you see it? Almost immediately it starts to 
Yeah, you can. Bleaching is actually a really fun technique. And if you using ink like this, bleaching works really well because it complete it turns your background quite white. And I saw one done recently by a French demonstrator who actually it was apples and she did a beautiful um, watercolour background and then she had the apples and she did that the inside of the apples with bleach so that you had the white apples standing out. You had the white apples standing out against the beautiful background and that's a really nice thing. So, yes, that, that's taking it one step further, but, yes, you certainly can add bleach like so. All right, so, you know, you can really start to get a bit creative um, decide what areas you would like to be white and bleach them out. Yeah, that's another way to go. Yes, stamping with water on a background that has been saturated with ink. That's correct, Michelle. Yep. It does make lovely backgrounds. I know you mean the the little the little diamonds. Isn't that cool? I think it's really nice. I love the little diamonds. And straight away, it takes it up just to the you know takes it up to the next notch kind of thing. So there you go. All right, so that was the first thing I wanted to show you tonight, okay, was how to make a beautiful card. This one I just used a little bit of our um, – I love this ribbon, especially with any when I've got black on a card. I love using this ribbon because it just goes so beautifully with the black and just pulls it all out of there. Um, this little label, can you see the little label here? This – oh, it helps if I hold it in the right place. This little label is part of the dies that are part of this set. Uh, let me show you. And this is all part of the set for $68.25. It's a really good bundle price. All right, so this one cuts out um, cuts out the um, this little guy, cuts out the big the big main one, as you can see. All right, so that's a perfect match for that one. And then you've got these little guys, which um, you can then put your little yellow wattle and do different colours of yellow and add them to the branch. Same with these little guys. These are all little extra wattles. And this here is a little label that does, can you see the top of it has like a little um, embossed bit. And that's what I've used on my card here, the little embossed, little embossed bits on there. Oh, helps if I hold it in the right place. You can use it with your blends. That's a great idea. Yes, it is full strength bleach in the pen um, and really I shouldn't leave it in there <laughs> because it makes the um, it makes the um, the brush part of it go a little bit crusty so I really should empty it out and give it a rinse but I'd been a bit lazy and just left the bleach in there and as you can see it still works but um, if you want to get maximum life out of your pen you're probably better to rinse it. So there you go. Yep, just bleach. 5 a.m. Oh, okay. Thank you, Kathy. Lovely to see you and um, say hi to Susan for me. <laughs> all right. So that's what that's all about. Um, okay. So I thought last last Sunday night I told you I was going to do something and then I totally forgot to do it. Does anyone remember what it was? <laughs> Oh, that's cute. They did need some fun sentiments. What will we do to celebrate? Wouldn't that have been good? You know what's been really nice? So I've been talking to a couple of American friends during the week and they had no idea what those flowers were. And they were fascinated when I told them that not only were it's, is it the national emblem of Australia, but it's actually there's a day dedicated to it. Whether it be 1st of August or 1st of September, who really cares? But it is actually uh, our national flower and we're pretty excited that it's in the catalogue. So there you go. <laughs> All right. Okay, so I thought, does anyone remember the little label dieback? Yep, okay, thank you. Thank you for the reminder. <laughs> Thanks, Denise. You guys are good to me. Stop me from losing stuff by making sure I put it back when I need to. I'm not very good at putting things away. <laughs> so let's pop that away. All right. I'll look and see Margaret's saying the same. So I've got more than one person looking out for me. Thanks, guys. So last Sunday night, I said I was going to show you something because I just got it myself. And it's some paper. And it's it's this gorgeous paper. It's called Santa Express. And I haven't actually bought the rest of the set yet because I'm trying to, um, because we've got this big trip coming up, 
I have to, we've been really careful with our money. So I've only just been buying the things I really needed and not, trying not to buy as many bundles, but it's really hard, right? So um, this is a paper that I bought and that the, I may end up buying the rest of the set. I don't know, but it is really, really cute. And you've got your little Santas, aren't they gorgeous? And on the back, we've got some stripy, dotty kind of, I don't know if you can see, can you see all the, like there's little dots in it? I really like that. I know it is right I agree no I agree with you yep the train that's right so then we've got some Santa Clauses um they're very cute and I don't know if you noticed that the Santa Clauses have been made um there's some darker Santa Clauses and some lighter Santa Clauses so they're trying to be very um what's the word is it politically correct is that correct and then on the back here we've got like fa la 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 Lots and lots of fala la la las. Okay, I will, Donna. I can do that. I'm going to do, I am going to do a card with it, but I'm going to do a, a, something a little bit different than what I had originally intended. Okay, then we've got little carts with a funny reindeer and cute little Christmas tree. And on the back, we've got some ho ho ho's. It's very nice paper. Really, really like it. Little presents. The colours in this, there's shaded spruce and mint macaron. All the colours are always listed on the back. Bermuda Bay, Cajun Craze, Early Espresso, Evening Evergreen, Granny Apple Green, Mint Macaron, Petal Pink, Poppy Parade, Sahara Sand and Shaded Spruce. Okay, Shaded Spruce is that really dark, bright green that's in the middle there. And on the back of this one, we've got some little shaded spruce and real red dots. Very nice. I think this is my maybe my favourite one. I really like this. I think this is a really, really pretty paper with the little trees. Um, really, really cute. I really like that one. I like the green. Culturally sensitive. Yes, that is good. Or PC. Yes, either of those. <laughs> um, and then we've got some kind of little snowflakes on the back with uh, shaded. That's on a shaded spruce. So that's shaded spruce, that colour. I really like it. I didn't, I don't use it as often as I should, but I do really like it. And then this one's interesting. It's got like different levels of little scenes. And then on the back, you've got some real red with stars, like shooting stars. Can you see them? They're shooting. There we go. Yeah, I know. I sit on the fence a lot too. So I thought I was going to, I'm going to use this one today. Um, even though this is, this one's my favorite, but I'll save that one for another time. And I'm going to use this one because I gave me an idea. And we like ideas, right? So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut the paper and I'm deciding how wide I want it to be. We'll start here. I'm going 14 centimetres. I can always cut it down a little bit more if I want to. Which one do I want to use? They're all different. Hmm. I think maybe the top one there. So I'm just going to cut it right here on the line. And then Granny Apple Green is one of the colours in this. And I've picked up some Granny Apple Green. It might not be enough contrast, actually, because it's too much the same as the... It'd be all right at the bottom here, but I think maybe I'm losing a little bit at the... Con Let me try some Shaded Spruce. Is that better? I think that might be better because it matches up with these. So, all right. I'm going to go with the Shaded Spruce instead. And I have got a piece of basic white card. Actually, is this, no, that's not basic white. That's that's basic white card, but not the thick. I want the thick. This is the thick one. The thick one is the one I prefer for my card bases. Oh, you like the second number of the tree at the front? Well, we could do that one, but I want to put something else in the picture. This is the thing, right? We could do that one, though. So you, you mean this one, Michelle? All right, let's do that one because she said so, right? Oh, yes, I saw that, Donna. She did make a beautiful card with that. She's very clever, Miss Ellen. All right, so it's 14. So let's try this at 14 and a half. We may end up cutting this down because the paper, yeah, actually, I'm thinking about it. And we may end up needing this side is, let's try here. 
I can cut this down a bit more if I need to. Alright, so let's see how this is looking. Yeah, I need to cut it down a little bit more. All right. Okay, so it's going to sit on this piece here. And let's fold let's fold a piece of basic white in half, and I want to see how that's going to sit on my card. So what I would like you guys to do is to stay tuned over the next live or two and during this week I'm going to be um, I'm, I'm going to be announcing exactly how it's all going to work I'll have it up on my blog and I'll put it I'll talk about it as well and let you guys know exactly how it's going to work because I really 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 want to okay now it's actually too long too big so I'm actually going to cut a little bit off this I'm going to go eight. Let me see. Yep, that's good. Which means this one needs to be uh, 13.3. And that should be fit. That should fit perfect. That does. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put that on. So yeah, I'm very excited to share with you guys what I'm going to be doing. Evening Evergreen, yeah, it would work as well. Although the colours in this set are brighter, where Evening Evergreen's a little bit more neutral and Shaded Spruce is definitely a more brighter green. So I like, I like this one for this. All right. So this is going to go right along here, just like that. All right. We'll end up with a greeting down the bottom here, okay? But because it's celebration, I thought we'd have something fun going on in our little scene. And let's see what we can do with the hippos. You're thinking, really, hippos? Seriously? Yep. All right, I'm going to go with this little guy here. And I am going to color him. I'm thinking, will I do it? How will I color him? Will I go watercolors or blends? Hmm. If I go blends, then I need to use uh, I need to use memento ink. If I go watercolors, well, it is watercolor month, right? So maybe I should do watercolors. And in that case, I'm going to want to use stays on. So <laughs> it is a good way to make some quick cards. But adding the hippo probably isn't going to make it um, any faster. But I kind of thought this might be cute. And we're going to give the we're going to give the hippo a Christmas feel. So this is a Christmas hippo, okay? And that's important, right? All right. So I've got some paper here, and this is my stays on ink because I want to use watercolors. There we go. And. I'm just going to cut this down small so when it comes time I can fit it easily through my um, through my small cut and emboss machine because that's important. Otherwise it wouldn't fit through on a big piece like that. All right, so what colours shall we use? I think we need it to be smoky slate, I think, for the hippo. I think that's going to go in okay. So let's grab our, I'm using the thin, the thinnest water painters um, because they're easier to, um, easier to control. Okay. And just test my color first. And then I'm just going to very, very quickly move my color down. So I'm just using the water painter. The water painters are great. They've already got water in the barrel. You just fill them up. You unscrew them and fill them up at the tap. Um, if you don't have water painters, you absolutely can just use a brush and water. But as you can see, it's quite quick. All right, you don't need to. You don't need to be very precise with it. And then I'm thinking 
because there's some petal pink in this, I'm thinking maybe a petal pink tummy and a petal pink face. Maybe? What do you guys think? Okay. So to pick up colour from an ink pad, you can either squeeze the ink pad together and get some colour on the lid, which is what I just did with the smoky slate one, or another way you can do it is you can use a smallish block and dip your block in your ink pad straight in and then pick up the colour off the block, okay? That messes your ink pad. If you're worried about your ink pad staying pristine, um, that, might be, that might be preferable. So petal pink is kind of an apricot -y pink. It's on its way to apricot, really. And when I colour, it's hard to keep talking. Sorry about that. I forget where I am. That's part of the joy of it, right? Okay, how's it looking? Cool? Very simple colouring. I'm going to colour its ears, petal pink as well. All right, I'm happy with that. Close this up. Look at me go, Jodie. I'm getting better at closing up my ink pads. I think it's only because you guys are watching. I don't get, I'm not that good when it's just me. All right. So then I'm going to need to bring in my machine. Let's open this up. I'm just using the little guy today. And we have a base plate, which is number one. The number one is very handy, so you don't forget which order they go in. Okay, then we have two, and then I have this little guy, and then I have my hippo dies. Now, the question will be, where did I put my hippo dies? I got them out before we started. Uh-oh, are they here? Please tell me I didn't lose them. Otherwise, I'll be cutting it out by hand, and I'd rather not. Why do I do this, guys? Why do you put up with me when I keep losing stuff? Seriously, why do we do this? I got them out just before I started the live. Oh, and I put the train paper on top of them. There we go. There they are. <laughs> a Santa hat would be one way, but I'm going to do it a different way. Oh, that's a clever idea, Bromman. <laughs> All right, so you can see we've got our little hippos. This is the one that's going to cut this little guy out. So I'm just going to line that up so it's sitting, so it's actually lined up to go through. And then we're going to pop this on top. Give it a push. You see the handle move and then it should go in. Now, if it doesn't, and this happens from time to time, pull it out. Still okay. I'm going to reset it. Turn your plate back over the other way. No, doesn't want to go. <laughs> and this happens every time I do a live. Has anyone noticed that this has happened to me before? I don't know why. Just when I go live. It doesn't happen when I'm doing it here at home. Just when I go live. It's almost like there's a plot. But that's okay. I am determined to get this through. There we go. Now it's going. What, was, what did Broman say? It was a little bit further up. She said um, that she has seen some demonstrators using the hippo set, the hippo stamp set, but making the image into a cow instead. I have not seen that done, but I, I'm impressed by it. That's what she said, Cherie. Right, so now we have our little hippo. And this is what I wanted to do with it. There's the good thing about these dies, okay, you've got all these cool things. You've got little flowers, you've got an umbrella, you've got 
really, really fun things that you can create. Your hippo can be doing all sorts of fun stuff, right? Which is cool. However, we also have this cool punch. Okay, this punch is the reindeer punch, and I thought I would give my hippo some antlers. All right, um, easy to do because when you when you're going to cut your antlers, um, I'll just show you. You can actually just make it cut the antlers so that you don't have to cut the whole thing and waste more paper. You can just cut the two antlers, which are right there on the corner. But I did cut mine before we started, and I cut them from silver paper. And I thought I would stick my antlers behind my hippo. And we're going to, this, this hippo is pretending to be a reindeer. Maybe I should give it a, a red nose. But anyway, All right, so we're going to have it some antlers on here, just like this. And I am going to use some glue dots to stick them on. So I'm going to pop them, pop a glue dot at the end of each antler. So it just goes here. And then another one. Right. So now the question is, where do we want our hippo to go? It can go right in. I don't want it right in the middle because that seems kind of, I think maybe to one side here because then I'm not in front of these trees or over near the trees. Where do we think we want the hippo? Where do you guys think you'd like him? I'm going to put him on dimensional. So while I decide, while I put the dimensionals on, you guys can help me decide where he should go. He or she. Is it a he or is it a she? That's the other thing. We need to decide the gender of our hippo and we need to decide we need to decide where the hippo should go. Oh hey Linda, it's never too late. Yeah, so um Don is asking Bromwin, how do you make a hippo look like a cow? <laughs> now that you've said that, <laughs> how do you do it? Because I we all need to know. All right, so I'm putting um, my dimensionals over. So I've already got the glue dots holding my reindeer um, antlers on, but I've also put my dimensionals on top of that to like doubly stick it in place so that it won't go, the, rain, the antlers won't fall off. All right, people are saying left side, to the left, to the left, everything you own in the box to the left. Okay, the left, here we go. There we go. We have a hippo with antlers as part of our little Christmas scene now what do you think do we like it I'm gonna pop this here so who says that you can't make Christmas cards out of hippopotamuses <laughs> oh four degrees that's too cold that's too cold Elizabeth I am very excited about the upcoming New Orleans trip. Also a little bit anxious, but I'm mostly excited. Um, and, you know, I'm, you know, hopefully I'll learn lots of fantastic new things that I can bring back and help, you know, sh and serve you guys even better, you know. So hopefully it will teach me a whole bunch of new things that I can, I can do to, to bring a fantastic result. So let me see what... Let's see, do I have, I think I have a nice long season's greetings here. That would look good across the bottom here. I think that might be the go. Let's see, how big is it? Yeah, I think that's going to be good. So let's try that. I'll grab my correct block. And I think I'm going to do it in shaded spruce because it'll match the card quite well. And let's pop this on here. 
Now, the other thing, of course, is we could wink a Stella over our little trees. We could do a whole bunch of other things. I might just add, because I mean, Jody's here, so we might just add some bling. There we go. We've got our season's greetings on there. <laughs> you like him? He's cute. Oh, so, you, okay, little circles drawn on the body in colour black. This is to make a cow, I'm assuming, Elizabeth. Is that right? Bling, says Jodie. Yep, yep, it's coming. It's coming. All right, let me grab my little box of bling and see what I can come up with. Uh, we have some, no, those are not correct. These are not correct. Although we could probably get away with these these ones. These would be nice. These little gems, I really like them. These are the... Um, Fine sparkle adhesive back gems. Can you see how nice they are? They've got like little prints on them. Really, really cool. Um, those match up with the gnome set, but you can use them on other things as well, of course. Let me see what else I have here. Maybe I'll just go with good old rhinestones. Maybe. I have got so many, so many bits of bling, guys. So, so many. Also, the other thing we can do is use plain rhinestones and colour them with blends. That's another option. That could be good. Or maybe I'll just go with some iridescent rhinestones. So draw and colour some black patches on the grey part of the hippo's body to make it a black and white cow. If it's a girl, extend her eyelashes with a black marker. I like that idea. That's cute. I have to play with that. <sighs> Great idea. What a good idea, guys. I didn't even think of that. But I didn't bet you didn't know you could turn your hippos into reindeers, which is what we've just done here. Kind of. <laughs> there we go. A little bit of bling on that. And there we go. We have another card. What do you think? So we have this beautiful background that we made and turned... I've showed how I turned it into a card but we made this beautiful background with the watercolor and then this one with the hippo dies and the Santa train the Santa's train picture the Santa sorry Santa's train DSP is it Santa's train now I've forgotten if you're looking for it um, it is in your catalog and it's up here towards the front there it is it's on page 17. There's that DSP. It's absolutely beautiful. There is matching stamps and dies, which I don't yet have. I do, however, have the Charming Landscapes embossing folders. I used those a couple of weeks ago, you might remember. And there's also some memories and more cards and envelopes. Really, really nice little. It's called Santa Express. That's what it's called. And the paper is called Santa Express 12 by 12. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Do you have it, Denise? Do you have this one? Oh, you could put a you could put a red rhinestone on his nose. You could definitely do that. That would be kind of cute. Or we could even use um, one of those pearlescent effects, like one of these guys, to make a red dot on his nose. There's a whole bunch of options, isn't there? Or I could colour in a bit of bling. But I'll decide whether I'm going to do that. In the meantime, I'm kind of I think it turned out kind of cute. What do we think? Do we like do we like our little reindeer? <laughs> yeah you do have them all oh yeah I, I understand why I looked at them and went mm, they're really nice oh, I'm so glad you like it that's awesome guys well this is what we've got up to tonight and I hope you had fun watching me it's not even an hour's up goodness me we did well tonight um, but please check back with me over the next little bit um, so basically there'll be um, a basic a, a class offered for everyone who orders during the month of August um, they'll be able to do a live class with me in September okay and if you can't watch the live class don't worry you can watch the replay but I'll be sending out the the um, to make the card or to, to make the project that we're going to make in the live you'll get a packet in the mail if you've ordered during the previous month that's how it's going to work okay I hope everyone enjoys that I'm really, really excited to do it with you because it's something I haven't tried before. So, um, and as you guys know, I love techniques, okay? Love, love, love techniques. And this is a way of me still 
showing you techniques, bringing you new ideas each month, um, and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so um, because I don't have much time up my sleeve the next two months, it's in place of my um, online classes that I've done, um, but it's it's a bit of a difference, a bit of a twist. Okay, good night, everybody. We'll see you on Sunday night. Have a fantastic weekend. Okay. Um, don't forget you can purchase everything that I've used tonight is available for purchase through my online store. You can just visit the blog. I'll put all the details in the description below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel here. All right, guys, have a fantastic weekend. Bye-bye.